Welcome creative adventurers. I'm Debbie Cohn with Decone Designs. Thank you for stopping by today. In this video, I'm going to show you two variations on the Sawtooth Star. This is one of a series of videos where I'm featuring blocks that I'm making from the aquiltinglife.com block of the month series for 2022. This is the March block. I've modified the block that aquiltinglife.com shows slightly, but I'll also show you the original version. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and tell a friend. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and head on over to my blog at decondesigns.com. There you'll find free patterns and lots of inspiration. Behind me on my makeshift design wall, you can see the three blocks so far. This one is the January block of the month for 2022. This is February for 2022, and this is this month's block. This is my version, and then this is the center for the original version. I'll go into more detail a little bit later in this short video. This block is a sawtooth star with some slight modifications. It is similar to January's block from a Quilting Life block of the month, but there are a couple of minor changes. One, as you could see from the from the finished block, the outside corners are half square triangles, and the center section is a combination of larger squares and smaller half square triangles. I will show I will sew this center section together and show you how it would look in the finished block. The other version that I'm showing you is the one that I will be using in my quilt. It is the sawtooth star with a solid print center. And the reason for that is not because the block is too hard at all, it's that I love this sloth fabric and I haven't used it yet from my Fat Quarter Bundle. And I really want to get going on using my beautiful turquoise sloth fabric. So for my Sawtooth Star, it will be a solid center and then matching star points with the outside half square triangles. One of the things that differentiates this month's block from the January block is that you have half square triangles in each corner of the block. I've chosen to use the blue fabric for the half square triangles, the HSTs of the corners of my block, because it matches the churn dash border and I think it will look interesting as a frame for the rest of the block. So the first thing that we need to do according to the pattern then is to draw a diagonal line down the middle of the light fabric. So there's a couple ways to do it. One is like this where you draw the line you would use your ruler, Let me move that over like this. You can either use your ruler and line up the edge of the ruler with each of the, the diagonal corners like this, or you can use the mat and line up the ruler to the mat. I'm using the ruler and lining it up with the corner and draw your diagonal line. I make sure I leave room for the width of the pencil so that my block is not off. I drew it dark. I would not normally draw it that dark, but I wanted you to see it. Another way to do it is to use a tool. If you happen to have this, this works great. It is um, a seam marker tool. You just line the corner, the arrow section right in the very corner, and then this line down here right, right along the point of the block. And in this case, we're, we're going to mark on each side, and I'm using a, I'm using a dashed line. The reason for that is that will become the stitching line and when I cut the half square triangles apart I will be cutting down the middle and you can just eyeball that with shears or a rotary cutter. So I find this faster but you can certainly do it the other way. After we draw the mama kitty, no move, I know you're being a full assistant but you need to move. So after you draw your diagonal line from corner to corner. When you take it to the sewing machine, you'll need to stitch a quarter inch on each side of it. If you're going to mark your quarter inch stitching lines, then you can use your ruler to do that. I line up my quarter inch marks right on the line underneath that I just drew. And in this case, I'm going to do a dashed line so that I know this is the stitch line. And then flip it around and do the same on the other side. And again, this you can do without having any specialty tools and this becomes your stitching line. Here I'm going to sew the half square triangles for the corners of my, saw, of my sawtooth star block. You can see my drawn line that goes from corner to corner and I've marked my stitch lines. I'm going to sew on the stitch lines, but I wanna sew just barely to the inside toward the center 
about one thread or two threads over. The reason for sewing just barely to the inside a thread's width or so to the inside of the stitch line is because once we cut this in half, we'll have two half square triangles, we will press it open and then we have to account for the fold, otherwise our block will not come out fully square. Let's go ahead and stitch just to the inside of the stitch line. Flip it around and stitch on the other side just to the inside as well. The second way I'm going to show is when we use the medium seam marker where we only mark the stitch lines themselves. Again, I'm going to stitch just barely to the inside of our stitch lines to accommodate for the fold over of the fabric. There is one more way to sew your half square triangles without the need for marking. In this case, I'm using diagonal seam tape, which I highly recommend. And I've pinned my two squares right sides together just to hold them stable while I sew. In this case, I need to sew a quarter inch from the diagonal line of the center. So I'm going to put my, my diagonal point there and here on the quarter inch line so that when I stitch my needle will go down this red line invisibly and it will actually be one quarter inch from the center diagonal. So I just scoot it on up, making sure it's lined up all the way, all the way up to the needle, making sure I keep this lined up as the, as the fabric goes through. I guide it gently, making sure this stays on the quarter inch line. Flip it around and sew on the other side. Again, putting the point, diagonal point there and there, offset on the quarter inch line so that when my needle sews, it sews on the quarter, one quarter inch away from the center diagonal again. Square, that's the third way to sew half square triangles. Now it's time to trim our half square triangles that form the corners, the stitch and flip corners of the block. There are a couple ways to do this. One way is to use this tool, specialty tool. It is the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer. I really like it because you trim and cut the dog ears off of your HSTs all at once. The way this particular tool works is you line it, line up the dotted line on the ruler with a stitch line on your triangle like that center it in the middle so you have about an equal amount on each side and then trim it off. And then you run your rotary cutter in the slots and that automatically cuts your dog ears. I'll show you the other way in just a few minutes. And the dog ear slots right there. And there we go. I'm going to gently press the seam to the dark side and that should be a perfect two and a half by two and a half inch half square triangle. All right, you can see that I have trimmed three of my half square triangles with the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. I'm going to press the seam back. The way I do that is we want the seam to go to the dark side so you put the dark side of the fabric up like this. Take your iron and gently press it back that. The last one I'm going to press open. I have not trimmed it. I want to show you a way to trim your half square triangles without a specialty ruler. So I'm going to gently press it back now and then I'm going to take it to the mat and square it up on my mat with a, with a ruler and a rotary cutter. Here's how to square up your half square triangles if you don't have a specialty ruler like I was using. You can place your half square triangle on the mat. It should be two and a half inches square for the size quilt that I'm doing. So I'm looking to see where, where my block is on the mat. Two and a half inches over, I can see it's just a little bit wide on that side and a little bit wide down here. So I'm gonna adjust the mount that's over so it's pretty much equal making sure that my block is lined up this way as well. I'm going to paste, 
place my ruler on the two and a half inch line and trim. I'm going to flip it around, trim the other side at two and a half inches. And here I can use my ruler or I can use my mat. For consistency, you probably should use your mat. This time I line up the cut edge right on the mat line. Then I go over two and a half inches, line up my ruler, and trim the excess. There isn't a lot, but a little bit, and it always helps to make sure your screw block is accurate. I do the same thing on the other two sides. Now I'm making sure this cut line that I've already squared up, the top and bottom, are even on the mat. Then I'm looking for any overage again on either side. There's just a little, so I'm going to adjust slightly, trim this side of the block, and then trim one more time. To make our star points, first we need to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the fabric squares for the star points. To do that, you can use a ruler like I am and just draw it this way. You could use any straight edge would work, line it up just like you did before, right here. In this case, it will be the stitching line. So make sure you leave room for the width of your pencil mark to make sure you have it lined up correctly. And you want to mark the back of all of your star point uh, fabric squares. Now we're going to use the stitch and flip method to make our star points. As you can see here, I've placed my square on one end of the rectangle. This will begin to create the star point. I did pin, I don't usually, but in cases like this, I do want to pin so that when I'm sewing, the, the square doesn't shift. I'm going to stitch just to the outside of the stitch line here to accommodate for the fold over like that. That way the star points will turn out accurately. You can chain piece these, it will go quickly. You need four, so you might as well just do them all at once. Again, here you could use diagonal seam tape if you wanted, you wouldn't even have to draw the line. Last one. The next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and flip this corner and either finger press or press it with an iron and make sure that it goes all the way out and forms the complete rectangle. So if you made a little bobble in your stitching, you can just remove the seam really quick and restitch it before you cut it off. I'm gonna to check to make sure that mine goes. I'm gently pressing, I don't wanna distort. And it looks really great. So I'm going to press with my finger now, gently. I'm going to take my shears and trim it about a quarter inch. I am eyeballing that. Now that we've stitched one side, pressed it, and then flipped it over, we're ready to sew on the other side of the star point. Again, you're going to sew just to the outside of the line. If you're not sure, just flip your triangle section and that will help you know which side you want to sew on. You want to, to sew just to the outside to accommodate for the fold. You can chain piece these very quickly. But what if you make a mistake and you do this? I thought I'd show you what you could do. Here I forgot to press it open first before stitching on the other one. So all I'm going, all I'm going to do is get my seam ripper and pull up this little section right here carefully, open it and then flip this back. I just need enough room to flip the triangle back and then lay this down and restitch it. Okay, we're fixing a little mistake. I'm gently going to wedge my seam ripper underneath and take out the last first couple of stitches. Don't want to distort. I'm going to take a couple more stitches out with my seam ripper. I just need enough to fold back this piece that's underneath. There we go going to gently press it back. I don't want to distort. Pressing. Yes, it's beyond the square right there, so I'm good. Now I can go back and finish stitching. So I go back, put it under the machine, under the needle, and restitch that one little section. Now we're ready to press our saw to star points open and begin assembling the block. 
Here are our star points. We sewed the squares onto the rectangles and we're ready to press them back. Gently, like that. Gently pressing back. Once I've made sure that it reaches all the way, then I will trim this second seam right here and then we'll square them up. Let's finish pressing. I'm eyeballing my quarter inch seam here. It doesn't have to be exact. No problem there. When trimming your star points, the procedure is the same as trimming your half square triangles when you don't have a specialty ruler. They do make specialty flying yeast type rulers. You're welcome to use that. I don't have one. So I'm just going to use my mat like I did for the last HST. Again, I take my, my star points, I line them up across this way, and then looking to see how much over or under I might be at the two and a half inch mark, because mine happens to be two and a half inches wide for the size quilt I'm doing. I've got it just a little bit over on each side. Line up my ruler and trim. Flip it around. Again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm centering any overage or underage is lined up along the mat line and trimming the excess on the sides. Flip the block and do it one more time. You'll repeat for the remaining star point rectangles. Now it's time to assemble the original center of this block. In the original block, you have your two main pieces, and then you need to turn your half square triangles so that the solid pieces are toward the center. It'll be like that. Then we'll just put them together, right sides together. It's a four patch. We're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. I would flip this one over when I sew so that I can see, make sure this gets flipped down and sew with a quarter inch seam. And then we'll sew the two sections together to make the center four patch. Let's go to the machine. You can see that I have my center four patch laid out. That way I'll make sure I keep the pieces where they belong. I start with the top one, lay them together, right sides together. I'm gonna to sew a quarter inch seam. Here I'm using diagonal seam tape, but you could use a sewing ledge. If you had a quarter inch foot, you could use that as well. And the other one. This one flipping over, careful to sew on the same side, the correct side, so that I can make sure that this does not flip up on me. Here are the two patches. I'm going to gently finger press to the dark side, and then I'm going to sew the top section and the bottom section together. When you press to this dark side, that means you'll be able to nest the seams easily. So I'm going to nest the seams right here, slotting them one right up against each other lining up the edges, and then I am going to pin in three places. I start by pinning the nested seams. Then I pin the edges. Now we'll stitch with a quarter inch seam down the center. There you have it. What I'm going to do is press the center seam open so that the block will lay flat. Here are the two different centers for the block. On the right hand side, on my right, is the original version. And you'll notice that the half square triangles do not quite meet. That's okay because when we stitch our quarter inch seam, when we stitch the center into the rest of the block, it will meet right about at the point. So it won't be any problem. And then here is my version, which is just one solid print, <clears throat> which is just one print fabric, no uh, four patch in the middle. So let's assemble the block. I'll show you both ways. Here you can see I've assembled my block on my quick and easy, well used homemade design board. I have my center sloth block, I have my star point rectangles there, top, bottom, and two sides, and then I have my corner 
half square triangles with the print facing toward the corner because that's how I want it. This happens to be the same print as my churn dash borders. I think it'll really frame the sawtooth star very well. So the next thing is to assemble the block itself. I'm going to do it in rows because that's how my brain works. You can do it whichever way you want. I'm going to sew this one onto here, right sides together, and then this side on, and then the same with the middle row, and then this row, and then I'll join the rows together. I'm not going to show you how to sew it row by row. It's the exact same procedure as we've done when we're sewing our smaller sections together. Before I do, I want to show you how the center would fit in in the original. It would look like this. We'd fit it right in there, and when we stitch them together, that will bring it to the points on the half square triangle. One quick tip on pressing this block. You can see I've sewn the rows together. When I press, I'm going to press the top seams toward the outside, the middle seams toward the inside, and the bottom seams toward the outside. That will help me to nest the seams, and this is middle seam this middle section here makes it the most difficult, so we want that to lie the most flat. Pressing it this way will reduce some of that bulk. Here you can see the original center for the sawtooth star. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to show you that I pressed the center seam of the block open. That will reduce the bulk in the block. Here is the completed block with my solid print center. Here's the original version with the four patch half square triangles in the center of the sawtooth square. You can see when you stitch it in that the uh, points will meet in the corners. So it'll look really cute if that's what you choose to and do. And here you can see the finished block. This is the version right here that has the four patch in it. I didn't sew it in as I mentioned in the video. Just so you could see, I just, I just laid it in so you could see how it would look if you chose to sew the original version. Let me remove that and show you my here version. Here is my version. I've chosen the solid centers and with the half square triangle corner framing. It looks great. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you'll join me next month when we sew another block in the aquiltinglife.com block of the month for 2022. I'm so looking forward to it. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, tell a friend, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way you can support my channel. And then head on over to my blog at Decone Designs where you can download free patterns for your personal use. Thank you for watching. See you next time.